Uh, I get to announce our speaker for today. It's Rafer Weigel. Um, you may have heard that last name before. He has a pretty famous father uh, previously in the business. So uh, in, in the Chicagoland area, you, you probably have heard his name. Uh, we are super fortunate to have Rafer here uh, sharing his expertise with us. I have, uh, you know, just from meeting him from the beginning, just hit it off immediately, connected immediately. He's such a great guy. Um, doing really, really great things. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to do his formal. Rafer Weigel is the president and founder of Weigel Media Group, a content creator, uh, having worked as a journalist for Fox, CNN, ABC7, Chicago, and the Los Angeles Times. Weigel Media Group builds brand awareness for businesses and nonprofits through expert storytelling in video and written formats. WMG uses media coaching and collaborates with clients to craft engaging narratives. Sorry. <laughs> that was the Emmy playoff music. I wrote, a, I wrote way too long of a bio there on that there one. There was, yeah. there was. <laughs> yeah, so that's, we could just leave it at that. All we'll good. Without place. further ado, Raper Weigel, yeah. take it away, buddy. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And, I, and this presentation, I think, is going to dovetail nicely onto uh, what Patrick uh, McGowan is, is proposing with video. We're cut from the same cloth. Uh, before I share my screen, this uh, presentation is uh, based on um, – is basically based on the, uh, excuse me, uh, the three books that I'm just now presenting to you. Hold on, uh, bear with me. Having technical difficulties. Do you guys see that okay? My card there, Raising Brand Awareness Through Storytelling? Yep, just one over at the bottom. No, we see your, uh, we see the all your slides on the screen. Right now. You see all the slides. Share, right. share your other screen. Yeah, that's okay. probably what it was. Okay, bear with me, share screen. Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's try that. How about that? Hey, there you go. Okay. Yesterday's media, it says. It's on yesterday's okay, media. Great. Well, I need to. Okay, great. So this entire presentation, and now I'm going to start the timer, is based on my uh, 40 years being in the media and the three books that I put in the, ch in the chat, They Ask You Answer by Marcus Sheridan, Story Branding by Donald Miller, and Gary Vaynerchuk's Crushing It. I highly recommend every single one of those books for you guys. It's also based on my experience with my father and how he was able to build a brand uh, through storytelling with his uh, journalism career. A little background about us. Um, so, you know, we say we take a journalistic approach to marketing. Um, we are not videographers, we are storytellers. And so, uh, and we just really believe in the power of, of storytelling and putting a face on the brand and how important that is. And this presentation is going to support a little bit of that. I got the idea to do this because when I was working in news, I saw that yesterday's media, traditional media is dealing with a resources crisis. When I was at Fox 32, we had two reporters to cover the entire region of Chicago. That's a shooting in Inglewood and snow in Barrington. And in Chicago, that's almost every day, and that's also all the media cares about. They only care about breaking news. I would get wonderful stories about companies doing amazing things that we were never able to cover. So I thought, how do we bridge that gap? Social media, creating content, and creating your own story don't rely on the media to tell your story. Number one, they could get it wrong. Number two, you're at their mercy. You don't know what mood they're gonna be. And number three, their audience is shrinking. So really, what's the ROI? And you know, also now, you know, everybody's a reporter as well, which is another reason why traditional media is shrinking. And this also speaks to the fact that you can create your own video content. You don't need other people to do it. And that's why, you know, as I see uh, uh, McGowan nodding in agreement, you know, this, this speaks to, again, why you should do his, his webinar. Um, so, you know, just a little quote I liked, uh, you wouldn't dress for yesterday's weather, so why design for yesterday's behavior? So you need to innovate for a number of reasons. First and foremost, your target audience. The pandemic has shifted the behavior and people expect visual content of some kind. Uh, this 84% of people expect brands to create content. Um, last year, the study said only 45% of B2C marketers believe visual content is their most important type of content. Well, that means that 55% are getting it wrong. I mean, everybody needs the visual content. B2B, it's expected to be much higher, but one of the things that I found fascinating is that 80% of all buyers make their decisions online before ever talking to a salesperson. So the importance of having your brand, your 
your presence, your story, your face on your website and your social media has never been higher in uh, the post, uh, post-pandemic. Um, you know, and everybody's online. I mean, it's, you know, the, the statistics are there. Ironically, my generation, Gen X, we're only 81% of us is online. And I thought that was a incredibly low. I, so, and if, you know, eventually that's going to be up to 100%. Um, so the problem with that, obviously, there's a lot of noise. There's another great book called Break Through the Noise. How do you break through the noise? The average person is now bombarded with 6,000 to 10,000 ads in every single day. So how do you stand out? The answer is a good story. Everybody listens to a good story. Crafting that strategic narrative with authenticity, consistency, and engagement. You know, 25, uh, you know, five years ago, video was all the rage. People are spending tens of thousands of dollars on these wonderfully uh, polished videos and not making any money because you really do need that consistent engagement. And at the end of the day, authentic is better than polished. And putting a face on the brand, these were just some examples that I felt really stood out. Elon Musk, I mean, look, that guy's got more Twitter followers than Tesla. Um, Bill Gates, you know, Air Jordan, as soon as they put that face of his brand on Nike, Nike took off, even like, you know, flip and flow with Progressive, you know, the Geico Lizard. I mean, the M&Ms, when they went with this campaign, the M&Ms found that there was a 300% engagement rate on social media from millennials. They would have votes, who's your favorite Eminem? Again, creating some kind of personality that somebody can identify with. Richard Branson, I don't even know what he does anymore, but I know who he is. Um, And so that authenticity does build trust. And at the end of the day, when you have storytelling, it's gonna be with video, 22 times more engaging than just facts alone. Having the recognizable face, telling your story and being the face of your brand allows you to build that connection with your audience more so. And one of the the things that I'll give up with the secret sauce on storytelling, and this is addressed in Story Brand by Donald Miller, when when we work with clients, what we do is we want to make sure that the client understands it. It's not a sales pitch. This is just, you know, for you to also, if you're doing your own videos, you are not the hero of the story. The hero of the story is your customer and your client for whom you are solving a problem. The key to great storytelling is positioning your brand as the guide, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Yoda, to the, to the Luke Skywalker, which is the customer, telling them how to defeat Darth Vader. This is a classic mistake that is made in PR. When I would get these press releases and it would say, company A is so, so great and company A does this and they like long walks on the beach and they enjoy this and this, this, this and paragraph four, oh, and they developed a cure for cancer. No. Uh, Cancer patients suffering from the disease do to find some relief. You have to, the company's the solution. The company is not the story. So Jeff brought up my dad. Um, So this is just a little, uh, you know, anecdote for some of you over the age of 35 who grew up in Chicago. Iconic sportscaster in Chicago for a number of years. And back then he didn't have any social media. He had three minutes on Monday through Friday on the 10 o'clock clock news to do a sports cast. So he created a franchise and it did two things. He created a a brand called Weigel's Wieners every Thursday where he did sports bloopers and he would mix in Laurel and Hardy, Three Stooges, Google It Kids, um, you know, just movie clips, that kind of stuff. Um, and, And that's what people remember. And then he also later on, he started to embody the colorful jackets. Craig Sager, I met one time, admittedly said, I ripped off your father's shtick. My father was a Yale graduate, a highly educated individual. At uh, one point, he uh, quoted Rudyard Kipling in a story about the White Sox, to which one White Sox fan said, who did Rudyard Kipling play for? But all they remember was the Weigel media or the Weigel Wieners and, uh, and his colorful jacket, sadly left us far too soon. And he was authentic. He wore his emotions on his sleeve. That phone would ring every single night with people calling and complaining, but they still tuned in because they wanted to see what he was going to say next. And storytelling does not obviously have to just be in video form. You know, the narrative needs to translate to all of your marketing materials. Nike's just do it, find your greatness. Greatness is not born, it's made. Again, that's reaching out and positioning the customer as the hero, but it's making the just do it. Nike is setting themselves up to be that guide to help you achieve 
So it's that shared values, right? People buy Tesla because they believe in renewable energy. So when you put your values out there, Mike Wapner, you talk a lot about being, you know, socially conscious. That's very, very smart in your investments because that's going to resonate with people in terms of the shared values. Tesla did a series of commercials where they just factored um, they just uh, showcased the people in the factory and all the workers there. It brought back the curtain. It did exceptionally well. It allowed people to connect with the people that work there, not beyond just the product itself. And remember when SNL with COVID and they had to uh, go back to their home, and, you know, doing it via Zoom, everybody thought it was going to tank. It was a huge hit. The ratings were thermen of SNL at home yielded some of its most authentic and compelling content in years, much to the light of its fans. This goes back to it's important to be authentic over. If you do a crappy video and, 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 you know, look, if it's really, really good content on a cell phone, it's going to resonate. It's going to connect. You don't have to spend a lot of money on something super slick and polished. And that's why visual marketing is such a component. Um, you know, this is just a repeater. I need to remove that slide. Forgive me. Um, so what users do, uh, probably not necessary as well, but videos are shared 1200% more than text and links combined. It's just such an important thing. People are on their phones. And this stat here, on their mobile device, we'll watch more than 50,000 years worth of product reviews on video. YouTube is the second most search engine after Google. Get your videos up on the web and do it consistently. It's the seven times rule. And you guys, most of you probably know that. Um, you know, we're a big proponent of when we do the video, we want to craft eight of them from one shoot because we want to advance the narrative. It's episodic television. It's the reality show mindset these days. They need to hear from you seven times before they're going to pull that trigger. So, I mean, this is, again, this is not a selling point. This is just kind of giving you guys a workflow concept of how we work. Um, we collaborate on what the strategic overall narrative is with the client. We'll create from that shoot uh, blog and one long form video, and then we'll do um, usually four other 30 second to one minute pieces with different key messages. And it just breaks it down. Soundbite one, two, three, and four. That's just, you know, for the remedial 101, if you were ever interested in, you know, how, how you compile uh, that structure. And again, the stories, what are the stories that you should tell? What's it like to work here? Employee purpose, work life balance, mission outside of work. Again, you're, you're not necessarily making your company the hero of the story, but you are giving a window into the type of values that you have to create that shared value connection like a Nike. A process, you know, that's, that's another video you should be doing. You know, it's not magic. Your people, intellectual property and expertise are of value. Um, your products and services, your celebrations, and your knowledge. Um, I'm working with an IT company right now. And to me, you know, we want to tie in the fact that hacking is the lead story in the news right now. And so my goal is not to talk about how great they are. It's to talk about the dangers of hacking and how every single business needs. So people are going to get some kind of educational value from the videos and the posts that you create. It's not just about tooting your own horn. It's about informing the viewer and giving them uh, some information. And uh, that is a selling one. So I'm going to remove that. And uh, so I think I got it in under 15 minutes. I went a little bit faster. I apologize if it seemed a little frenetic. Um, but uh, but uh, that is my story and I'm sticking that to it. That was incredible, you. Rafer. Thank you so much. There was so much good stuff in there. It's ridiculous. I took a bunch of notes, and uh, and I'm gonna have to review this. But um, the hero is the customer, and and I love I love Star Wars, so I loved your analogy being the Obi Wan and the Yoda, right? Not the Luke Skywalker. The customer is Luke Skywalker. Um, and forgive me, guys, if, if you aren't Star Wars fans. But anyway, but I love that, and and um, I got my Yoda up there. Um, but anyway, the. Uh, that that's so smart and it's so interesting because I think we all do that, right? And and try to position our business, ourself, our company as the hero that we're going to come in and rescue you. I, I love that perspective. Um, do you have any more? Sorry, and I don't mean to ask this question and take up the time, but I, I really do want to know, like you elaborating on that a little bit more on how you 
figure out what those challenges are maybe and those problems that you really kind of focus on versus it being yourself. Yeah, well, and that's where I'm a big believer in terms of in terms of the process for video, um, what I foresee as the key to establishing that and finding that key messaging is through an interview process. Um, you know, this is, I, I don't mean to sound like selling, but the model that we've created, I, I interview my clients as an investigative journalist. The same way that I would when I was doing an interview for a news story. Again, when you're a journalist and you're doing a news story, you're not doing that story to make you the journalist, the hero, or the person you're interviewing. Again, the hero is the viewer. Why is the viewer going to pay attention to this? You know, and so, but the information that's coming from that source, it's up to the journalist to disseminate that and to craft that in a way that is digestible and engaging from a storytelling perspective. So that, that is why I'm a big proponent. Um, and I know other people that are now, you know, former colleagues of mine that are in this space from, from the media that do this. And that, that's why I feel that having that component is very, very crucial. Um, and that ultimately is when people work with us, you know, that's kind of our differentiator is that consultation process through the interview. So the, one of the first questions I ask, and you can ask this of yourself, I mean, is how do you solve problems for your customers? And, that, and, 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 and the why, why do you do what you do? Because even if you get into the why and what's important to you, that's still gonna resonate back to the customer on that shared value. It's all about creating that connection. So yeah, there is some horn tooting to some degree, but it, but it has to, if it comes from that place of problem solving, empathy is so important, then it's going to resonate and it's going to resonate into a sale um, after they see and hear you usually five, six, seven times. Does that answer your question? It totally does. That's, that's awesome. I, I appreciate that insight. Uh, I want to open it up and let a couple people, uh, have, we have time for a couple more questions. Uh, if you have them, uh, go ahead and just speak up. Jeff, uh, this is Don. Um, being a top SEO company, I'm going to back up what Rafer just said, I tell clients, we tell clients every day, content is king and video is king and YouTube is still king. So you need to be doing this. And as far as what the client's looking for, a lot of you businesses don't even get what your client's are looking for because you're thinking in the form of your own business, that you know your business. They don't know your business. So on our side, when they're searching, that's what we do. We try to find out what they're actually looking for it and then get it back to that Rafer and tell them, hey, this is what they're doing, and then they get that video for them, and then it's all it's all about that content. And content is king, especially in SEO. We we require it, and um, just back in what Rafer said, unbelievable. Love it, love it. Anybody else have any uh, questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, hi, Rafer. I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, is it possible to get a copy of your uh, PowerPoint slides? Um, well, I've never been asked that before. Um, I, I put a lot of work into it. So um, my email is in the chat. Why don't you shoot me an email and let's discuss it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. It was and really, I, and I really don't know very interesting. I took yeah. a lot of notes, but yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have them firsthand if I could. But thank you. Of course. Awesome. Right here. Um, quick question for you on the, the question of authenticity. You know, there's um, a quote by a film and TV director, Steve Stockman, who says about video, if it's not good, it's off. And so there's kind of a, I wouldn't even call it a fine line. There's a big gap between poli too polished or polished versus what we would call authentic, authentic, authentic. But sometimes authentic can also mean mediocre. So I'm just trying to figure out where that sweet spot is in terms of production or what your opinion is, is where's that sweet spot where video is interesting, but maybe not polished. So that's the challenge. And that's a really great question, Patrick, you know, that to quote uh, uh, um, Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now, it's a snail crawling across the edge of a straight razor. <laughs> Um, and I'm not going to imitate Brando. Um, so I'm a big believer in the interview format. I don't, I, I feel that the viewers, the studies have show that people prefer watching videos where people are being interviewed as opposed to talking directly to the camera. Now that's generally a performance based issue. Some people are just uncomfortable with looking and talking into the camera. You know, if the case, if it's a politician and you really need to build their trust, then you then you can do that. Um, just basic production value, a nice camera, 
Uh, we do a two camera shoot. We light it very, very well, but we keep the costs down because at the end of the day, the mess, you just, here's what I'll say. The production value cannot distract from the content. It has to be, it has to be good enough to support the content. Um, and it had, can't be, and it can't, my opinion is it can't be too fancy and too polished that it takes away from the content. So, um, so yeah. And, and, you know, that's why there's a lot of, you know, it's, it's a crowded field videography. And that's why I tell people we're not videographers, we're storytellers. We're going to get to your story. We're just going to make it so that the production value uh, supports it. And, 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 you know, sometimes it, it takes a few takes, you know, sometimes it takes a little while. It's up to that interviewer to really pay attention to the person who's speaking and get a sense of, all right, am I buying this? Am I believe in this person? You know, and, um, and just a window into the process. I've interviewed people that were so stiff, so uptight and selling me to the point where I had to break them down like Stanley Kubrick, where I'm just talking sports with them for 20 minutes. And then I start asking them their questions again. And then they're giving me more natural and honest answers just to get them out of their head, to get out of the, you know, the stop selling. It's, there was a line that I was told once when I first started out in journalism, you are enough. You don't have to be more than just who you are. You are enough. I mean, if the Kardashians can get millions of viewers, my God, anybody will watch something if it's remotely interesting uh, and has inform informative value. I know that was a very long-winded answer, Patrick. I don't know if it answered. I'm sorry. A quick question, no, Rayford. Sorry. Thank you. Rayford, this is Derry. Great job. Very, very interesting. You got so much info there. Quick question, though, regarding interview. How much work does it take for the interviewer to be able to do a good job with the person that they're interviewing? It just takes doing some homework. Um, so for our process, again, um, what we'll do is we, we first do like a consultative session where I interview them and ask them questions, take notes, record it, and then we'll disseminate from that what the key messages are. Here are the key messages, here are the videos that I propose, boom, 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 boom. Um, some people, I've, we've just shown up and just rolled the camera, recorded it, and then you go through the footage, and like with the Chicago Autism Project, we went there, shot for a day, uh, and then I proposed five messaging videos for them. Hey, these are the ones that I would suggest based on the sound that I hear. So you do have to know a little bit about what you get in the can, you know, you can't, you can, you can go in with a guide, but there has to be an improvisational nature the day of shooting in order to get that authenticity. If it's too scripted, if you're reading from a teleprompter, my opinion is you're dead. I, I, nobody's going to buy it. Nobody's going to listen to you. They're, they're just going to, I feel they're going to tune you out. Some might disagree with me, but that's, that's just my feeling. Did that answer your question? Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. That's awesome.